Hey guys, today we're going to talk about permutations. So what exactly is a permutation? Well, a permutation is really a counting method, telling us how many ways we can reorder certain things. And let's say that we have Alex, Bob, and Charlie. And the question is, how many ways could these three people line up? And it turns out that the math is actually pretty straightforward. However many things there are, in this case three, we're going to do three factorial. And factorial really just means three times two times one. So in the question of, let's say that there's seven people in line, how many ways could seven people line up? And the answer is going to be seven factorial, which means seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. So pretty straightforward, right? So now let's take a look at a situation where this gets a little bit more complicated. So what happens in a parking lot? So let's take a look at an example where we have six parking spaces. So in these six spaces, we could park up to six cars. So my first question is, if we have six cars, how many ways can we park the six cars in our six parking spaces? Well, this is actually the, very similar to that line question. So since we have six items and six spots, it, the answer is just going to be six factorial, which is again, six times five times four times three times two times one. So now let's make this a little bit more difficult. What happens if we only have five cars in the same six spaces? Now, should it be five factorial? It seems like it should be, right? Because the idea that we have five cars. But what's important is in a permutation question, we don't really consider cars any different than any other objects. The question really is how many choices do we have? So let's say that I'm driving up the first car. So I pull up. How many choices do I have as far as where I can park? And I have six choices. Now, I'm going to take one of those spots. Next person comes up. Now, how many choices do they have? So the second person that comes up only has five choices. The next person that pulls up, four choices, and so forth. So we see that it's still six factorial, not five. Let's continue on with the scenario and think about the situation where we only have four cars in the same six spaces. Now what should we do? Now this is where we get a little bit more complicated because, see, we still have six choices. We still have the idea of four cars or we could choose to keep it empty twice. So how does that really look? So let's consider the math that we've done so far. So, so far, if we said we had six spaces, it always was six times five times four times three times two times one, which was again, six factorial. So should we start with six factorial? And yes, because just like I said, we still have six choices, four cars and two empty spaces. So our math still says six factorial. But what about these two empty spaces? So these two empty parking spaces are very special and they're special because we can't tell them apart. Now, let's say that in the empty spaces, let's say that th this is for a valet company. Okay, so in the empty spaces, I don't want somebody else just rolling in and parking without, you know, getting their car valeted. So I'm going to put a cone there. Okay, now my cones are labeled A and B. So here's the thing, I can still park one of the four cars or I can put cone A or cone B. So if that's the case, the answer would still be six factorial. Okay, because there's a difference between cone A and cone B. But here's the thing, what happens if the cones don't exist? I can't tell the difference between the empty spot one and empty spot two. They look identical to me. Why? Because they're empty. There's nothing there. So we can't differentiate these. And this is what makes our problem special in this case. So what do we do? Well, it turns out that let's, for example, go back to our cone situation. So basically we counted, if we do six factorial, the situation where there's a cone in this empty spot and cone B in this empty spot. But we also counted when they switch and cone B is in that first spot and cone A is in the second spot. Now, did we overcount any other way? No, not without moving any of the cars. So in fact, all we did was really double our count so we can divide by two. So, the answer here is six factorial divided by two. What happens if we have six parking spaces, but now we only have three cars? Is it going to be six factorial divided by three? And the answer is it's not. So why not? In the situation where we have three empty spots, 
The problem is, how many ways could we reorder three things? So we go back to our permutation question. So I'm going to have these three cones again. Okay, I'm going to park the cars. We're done with that. I have three cars parked. Let's focus on the cones. So now we have cone A, B, and C because there's three empty spots. Now, how many ways could I switch these three cones? So I can have A, B, C. I could have A, C, B. I could have B, C, A. I could have B, A, C. And I could have C, A, B. And I could have C, B, A. I think that's six. All right, it should be six. And the question is, why six? Well, it turns out that we were just ordering three things. And we knew how to do that math, right? The way we could find out how many ways three things can be ordered is three factorial. And three factorial is six. So here's the thing. It's not that we're dividing our six factorial. So back to our parking lot question. We're not dividing our six factorial by how many items are identical, but rather how many items are identical factorial. So in this case, our solution is going to be six factorial divided by three factorial. So let's talk about another situation now, a little different. Let's ignore the empty spaces and switch things around and go to motorcycles. So now in this case, we have four cars and two motorcycles, okay? But here's the thing, in this parking lot, our first spot and our last spot are reserved for motorcycles only, okay? So now how many ways could we park our four cars and two motorcycles? So the thing in this situation is that the motorcycles have to be in the motorcycle only spots. Now, could they park in the car spot? They could, but you see, the cars can't park in the motorcycle only. It might only be a half size spot. So because of that, we have to deal with the motorcycles first. So our rule with this is that we start with the most restrictive space possible. In this case, our most restrictive space is the motorcycle only parking space. So let's park the motorcycles first. In the first motorcycle space, how many choices do we have? We have two choices. In the, so we park one of the motorcycles. In the next spot, how many motorcycle choices do we have? We have one left, so we park that. Now, going to the car space. Now in the first car space, how many choices for cars do we have? We have four things that still need to be parked, so it's four times three times two times one. So again, this was our introduction on permutations. For more specifics on permutations and also another video on combinations, click on the links that you see above. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.